In this video, we examine so-called climate change tipping points. I will explain what they are and why they might be important for the future of the world's climate. How do we define a climate tipping point? Most often, it is defined as a threshold for a climate element that, when crossed, leads to large and often irreversible change in the climate system. When a tipping point is crossed, that may have a significant impact on how we as humans interact with the climate around us. The climate system is very complex, and there are many potential tipping points that could affect it. The sixth report from the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, which was released in 2021, further defined a tipping point as a critical threshold beyond which a system reorganizes, often abruptly and or irreversibly. It can be brought about by a small disturbance causing a disproportionately large change in the system. It can also be associated with self-reinforcing feedbacks, which could lead to changes in the climate system that are irreversible on a human timescale. It's important to note that the changes caused by crossing a climate tipping point don't necessarily have to be sudden. For example, as global average temperatures rise, they will reach a point where the Greenland ice sheet will melt completely out. However, that melting won't happen suddenly. Rather, it will take thousands of years for that melting to be complete. Right now, climate scientists estimate that the rise in global average surface temperature needed to cross this tipping point is somewhere between 8 tenths of a degree centigrade and 3 degrees centigrade above the average surface temperature at the start of the Industrial Revolution. This is an example of a tipping point that will lead to a slow change that would be irreversible on a human time scale, but may be reversible over a longer time scale. Many potential climate element tipping points have been postulated by climate scientists. And for many climate elements, there is disagreement about how much global average temperatures need to rise to cross the corresponding tipping points. Here we examine some of the more important climate element tipping points, which are shown in this table, along with the expected consequences if they are crossed. In addition, in the description for this video, I've listed a few recent scientific papers that discuss several additional climate element tipping points. Note that there is a lot of uncertainty attached to the numbers listed in this table. For example, while the estimated tipping point temperature for the Greenland ice sheet collapse is 1.5 degrees centigrade above the global average temperature at the start of the industrial age, it could be as low as 8 tenths of a degree centigrade of warming or as high as 3 degrees centigrade of warming. And the time need for complete melting of the ice sheet could be as short as 1,000 years or as long as 15,000 years. Similar uncertainties are associated with other climate element tipping points. The Greenland ice sheet is the second largest ice sheet in the world. If it melts completely, it would raise global sea levels by about 7.2 meters or 24 feet. At present, temperatures in the Arctic have risen to the point where the ice sheet is melting at an accelerating rate, adding almost a millimeter to global sea levels every year. Around half of the ice loss occurs via surface melting, and the remainder occurs by calving at the edges of the sheet. The Greenland ice sheet has a tipping point because of melt elevation feedback. Surface melting reduces the height of the ice sheet, and the air at a lower altitude is warmer. The ice sheet is then exposed to warmer temperatures acceler accelerating its melt. A recent analysis of a Greenland ice core 
provides good evidence that the Greenland ice sheet melted away completely at least once during the last million years, and therefore strongly suggests that its tipping point is well below the 2.5 degrees centigrade, centigrade maximum temperature increase over pre-industrial conditions mentioned previously. In fact, at its present rate of melting, it would only take about 7,200 years to completely melt, so its tipping point may already have been crossed. The West Antarctic Ice Sheet is a large ice sheet in Antarctica, which in places is more than 4 kilometers or 2.5 miles thick. It rests on bedrock mostly below sea level, so it is in contact with the heat from the ocean, which makes it vulnerable to fast and irreversible ice loss. A tipping point could be reached once this ice no longer sits on rock and instead becomes floating ice shelves. Ice loss from the West Antarctic ice sheet is accelerating, and some outlet glaciers are estimated to be close to or possibly already beyond the point of self-sustaining retreat. The paleological records suggest that during the past few hundred thousand years, the West Antarctic ice sheet largely disappeared in response to similar levels of warming and CO2 emission scenarios projected for the next few centuries. If the West Antarctic ice sheet melts completely, that would raise global sea levels by about 3.3 meters over the next few thousand years. This past year, there has been a significant decline in Antarctic sea ice, which may portend even faster warming in the Southern Ocean. And that in turn could speed up the melting of the West Antarctic ice sheet. The Amazon rainforest is the largest tropical rainforest in the world. It produces around half of its own rainfall by recycling moisture through evaporation and transpiration as air moves across the forest. When forest is lost via climate change caused droughts and fires or by deforestation, there will be less rain and more trees will die. Eventually, large parts of the rainforest may die off and transform into a dry savanna landscape. A recent study reported that the rainforest has been losing resilience since the early 2000s. Resiliency is measured by recovery time from short-term changes. This delayed return to equil equilibrium of the rainforest is called critical slowing down. The observed loss of re resilience reinforces the theory that the rainforest is approaching a critical transition. The major consequence of a dieback to a dry savanna would be the transformation of the region from a carbon sink to a carbon source, a situation where the region would emit more car carbon dioxide into the atmosphere than it removes from the, from the atmosphere, leading to faster global warming. Perennially frozen ground, or permafrost, covers large fractions of land, mainly in Siberia, Alaska, northern Canada, and the Tibetan Plateau, and can be up to a kilometer in thickness. Subsea permafrost, up to 100 meters thick, also is found on the seafloor under part of the Arctic Ocean. This frozen ground holds vast amounts of carbon from plants and animals that died and decomposed over thousands of years. It has been estimated that there is nearly twice as much carbon in permafrost than is present in the Earth's atmosphere. As the climate warms and the permafrost begins to thaw, it releases carbon dioxide and methane into the atmosphere. With higher temperatures, microbes become active and decompose the biological material in the permafrost, hastening the release of carbon dioxide and methane into the atmosphere. This could happen in as little as 50 
over or over 50 years or over longer time spans once the tipping point is crossed and the loss would be irreversible because CO2 and methane are both greenhouse gases they act as self-reinforcing feedback on permafrost melt. We are still a long way from the estimated tipping point of four degrees centigrade of global warming since the start of the industrial age. So it may be a long time before we reach this tipping point. So we may be able to control greenhouse gas emissions and the corresponding increase in global temperatures before this climate element tipping point is reached. The Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, also known as the Gulf Stream System, is a large system of ocean currents. It is driven mainly by differences in the density of water. Colder and more salty water is heavier than fresh water. The Gulf Stream acts as a conveyor belt, sending warm surface water from the tropics north and carrying cold fresh water back south. As the warm water flows northward, some of it evaporates, which increases salinity. It also cools when it's exposed to the cooler air. Cold, salty water is denser and slowly begins to sink. Several kilometers below the surface, the cold, dense water begins to move south. Increased rainfall and the melting of ice due to global warming dilutes the salty surface water, and warming further de decreases its density. The lighter water is less able to sink, slowing down the circulation. If the Gulf Stream were to completely collapse, it would cause disruption of rains in India, South America, and West Africa, thereby impacting crops. It also would cause lower temperatures and more storms in Europe and more sea level rise on the east coast of North America. However, current climate models suggest that the Gulf Stream system will not reach a tipping point during the 21st century, but may do so by about the year 2300 if global warming continues at the current pace. If Arctic sea ice coverage were to disappear entirely, that is to collapse, there will be major climate consequences. However, for this to take place would require a very high degree of global warming. Current estimates are that it would require more than six degrees centigrade of global warming for that to happen. So it's unlikely that this tipping point will be crossed anytime soon. But we know that the Arctic is warming at least four times faster than the planet as a whole. And this phenomenon is the result of a decline in Arctic sea ice coverage in the late summer and early fall months. The loss of Arctic sea ice during this part of the year reduces the reflectivity of the region and allows for more of the incoming solar energy to be absorbed. This positive feedback effect may lead to a partial collapse of Antarctic sea ice, a situation where the Arctic Ocean is essentially ice-free for several months of the year. The consequences of even a partial collapse of Arctic sea ice would have serious consequences. These include major changes in the Northern Hemisphere jet stream that would lead to more extreme winter weather events. In addition, partial collapse of the Arctic sea ice would lead to faster melting of the Greenland ice sheet and loss of habitat for many species of wildlife and more erosion of Arctic coastlines and faster warming of Arctic permafrost and the exposure of the region to higher levels of commercial activity that would cause environmental deterioration in the region. The upshot here is that substantial environmental damage can happen well before a tipping point is reached. To sum up, as climate element tipping points are neared or across, the impacts will be felt widely and it may take a long time to recover from these impacts, even if global average temperatures stop rising 
or are reduced. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments section and I will do my best to answer them. Also, check out the articles listed in the description of this video for information on more potential climate element tipping points.